Okay, I'm kicking myself in the butt so much right now because I just recorded this entire video and apparently the camera was not recording. I swear on my life I saw the red light flash, but I guess I completely missed it. So I'm going to try to speed through this one, not waste our time. Guys, this video is long overdue. I'm so sorry. I know I'm supposed to be posting the 1st and the 15th of every month. This video was supposed to come out seven days ago. Um, well, today, seven days ago. I don't know when this is going out, but... This was supposed to be the video for the 1st of November, and I'm late. I'm sorry for that. So let's get right into it. We're doing another race recap video for the UTV World Championships. Reviewing the dash cam footage so we can see what the racers see, what the course is like, what the race is like. We have all new parts put on this vehicle. We have uh, new sponsor Raceline wheels. We have larger GBC tires now. We have the Fox shocks tuned to perfection. We have a new anti-gravity lithium battery, which is a lot lighter than the last one. We have weights in the clutch, and we have a clutch sprayer, which, you know, sprays the clutch with water to keep the temperatures cool and keep the temperatures down. So, implementing all these, it's going to make for great footage, it's going to make for a great race, and my poor camera, the poor dash cam got roosted and cracked. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the lens right there, spider webbed, cracked. Luckily, it's detachable and replaceable. Okay guys, but before we get into this video, please let me plug myself real fast. Uh, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. We are less than 50 away. We are so close, guys. I know we can do it. I know we can grow our community to 500 subscribers by the end of the year, January 1st or December 31st, whatever it is. That is a month and a few weeks away. So share this channel, share these videos. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your cat, tell your grandma, tell your friends, tell everybody. Let's get to 500 subscribers, guys. Okay out of the way let's get in this video oh by the way giveaway at 500 subscribers uh check my instagram for that i'll i'll put it up somewhere right here but there's a giveaway going on once we hit 500 subscribers so go get entered into that so before we start this footage it is something to be known that uh our tracker on the vehicle fell off sometime early on in the race because we were unable to track our vehicle or our lap time or our progression uh, at all during this race we couldn't find our vehicle anywhere on any of these apps that track them because our tracker fell off so we didn't know where we placed at the end of the race unofficially um, on the way home riding shotgun in Garrett's truck I scratched down on some paper I kind of used like the positioning of other vehicles their times what they got where we started who we started with and I roughly put us at eighth place now luckily we have these onboard dash cams because the racers were able to take these to the officials the next day and show them like look here it's time stamped we have footage throughout from beginning of race to end of race showed them and they placed us using that footage i believe um and my calculations were correct we got eighth place overall officially so that's fantastic so with that out of the way let's jump into this footage so the officials went around and told us hey guys if you jump the green light if you do a false start you're going to be penalized five minutes um, which if you saw our last video, it looks like the guy we're lined up with here definitely does jump the green light. It's harder to see in this video because obviously we're facing forward, but, um, he did get penalized the five minutes, so he did jump the green light apparently. Now I believe there's 36 racers in this, in this class right here, uh, going off in pairs of two, so that means there's 18 rows in total. I think we were placed about halfway through. But unlike the last race, it doesn't really matter where we were placed that much. And I'll tell you why. This course is very, very technical. And I'll explain that a lot more as we go through this first lap's footage. But it is a very, very technical race compared to the last one. The last race, wide open, flat fire roads. So you can carry a lot of speed for most of the course. Your average, I think, was about maybe like 65 miles per hour throughout the entire lap of the last race and this one I want to say maybe 25 to 30 miles per hour and you'll see why especially like right here deep rutted stuff super soft sand and gravel type terrain um, a lot of S formations going through canyons and whatnot there's a lot of G outs um, a lot of small hill climbs big hill climbs uh, drop offs those offset like short spaced whoops that you need to carry speed through or else your whole vehicle is going to be going like this the whole time <laughs> so it's not a very fast paced race it's a very slow very technical race a very um 
don't break your vehicle type race. You have to play it really smart and you have to know your vehicle's limits and know what you can take fast, what you can't, and don't break the vehicle. It's not a traditional desert race, like you're gonna have some whoop sections, you know, where it's just all suspension tuning and stuff. You got weird stuff like this. You're in a canyon, you got rocks out of nowhere, you got soft sand, you got a lot of turns. So, very, very technical course. That's why it's nothing like last race. This is a, this is a whole thing in itself here. Now the thing with this kind of course is, well, here's one of the hill climbs right here. You go on a hill climb, you end up on like the spine of a mountain at this point. And this section is a great example of, this is a hard course to make passes on unless the people are pulling over for you. You don't have the multiple options, you don't have the wide lanes um, to kind of take your own speed and get around them. Because uh, you're either in a canyon or on a spine or in a deep rutted trail, so getting up and over and there's no, there's not a lot of multiple trails on the sides of you to pick from. So it, it's, this race was really geared more toward you got to lay down a steady, consistent, good lap every lap to position well versus like the last one where we were kind of geared more toward let's see how many people we could pass and keep track of that that's not really the name of the game with this race right here you can see one of these canyons even if we wanted to pass this guy even if we were riding his ass i don't even think there's much room for him to pull over for us to get by there's not a lot of options for us to get by you just kind of have to ride it out and wait for an opportunity to pass. And the thing about slow technical courses like this is it it's really easy to get tunnel visioned on the, okay, we're going slow, we're, we're kind of playing it safe and reading the terrain and knowing what we can and can't do. And you get into that mindset. And the problem with that is there are sections of this race where you can open up, let your suspension eat, let your tires do the work, and cut down on your time but i think our racers did a perfect job of not getting that tunnel vision and being able to recognize those opportunities and take it fast so again even though it's open desert right here not a lot of passing options unless they're pulling over for us because there's a lot of essence so like if you try to go around them you might technically start cutting course and taking shortcuts to get on the stuff so here's one of the very, very few opportunities you have to go fast where it's flat and not a lot of turns and real easy to just carry high speeds like 60 miles an hour. I think there's only maybe three sections of this course where you can actually do this and they only last maybe five minutes. But I think right here might be one of those good examples of where where they realize they can just open it up a little more and not get that tunnel vision. I mean, maybe it's easier because they just came off of a 60 mile an hour sprint, but. I'm sure there's gonna be other options or other opportunities where we see that they don't get that tunnel vision and they let it eat in uh, some somewhat technical sections. Now the weather here, actually the weather that day was surprisingly amazing for this race. There was some good winds to carry the dust out. Uh, the temperatures were cooler, maybe high 60s. So we're not racing in like 110 degree heat like we were last time. So that keeps the vehicle's temperatures cooler. Not a lot of dust unless you're coming into mountain sections like this where the breeze just hits the mountain and the dust kind of stays. But here you see more technicals type more technical type stuff with them having to ride that spine, do some drop-offs and stuff, crawl down, and then open back up into this trail. And especially when you're not following somebody on the trail, especially on those mountain spine type things where it spider webs into different areas, it's easy for you to go off course and sort of get lost, uh, depending on how your maps are set up, I suppose. I've never used a Lawrence system before, so I don't know what the zoom and everything looks like, but Obviously, it's easier if you're following somebody on the course to see what path to take versus doing it on your own like this and you come up and like look at all these different spiderweb trails you could take. 
you can go over to the left there. Um, spider webs off even more from that left lane. It goes further out. You got the broken down guy here. So if you're not following somebody, it can be easy to get lost. But I think our racer did a very good job. I, I heard co-driver Bob was just on point with the navigation in this race. So that's fantastic to hear that their communication is stellar between each other. I'm leaving some extra footage here in lap one so you guys can get a real good feel for what the race is like, um, what the course itself looks like, and kind of the terrain and stuff. Because, I mean, if you're a spectator in the pits, you don't really get to see all this, you know? Only the racers get to see it, so I'm trying to bring that. What I'm trying to bring their point of view to it so we can have a better understanding of what they go through and what it's all like. So I leave a little extra footage of lap one in so you can get a good feel. Laps two, three, and four, um, a lot less footage, if any at all, you know. But enjoy this lap one. Really get to really, really get a feel for this. I think right here is a good section where they just kind of open it up and let it, eat, you know, start hitting mid 30s and uh, taking a little more speed through these technical sections because they got nobody around them and again they didn't get the tunnel vision so they, they know this is an opportunity to save a little bit of time even if it's seconds or fractions of a second but yeah they really try to they really try to take these opportunities where they can and that's that's great that's what you need because when it comes down to it in some scenarios when you look at those final results some people were behind by a second by two seconds by a fraction of a second so where you can save it take it and this part of the course right here you, most of it it's just been a trail that you follow the whole way around but um it looks like this section of the course almost every lap um they have to cut through like they just cut down this hill i don't know if it was marked like that or if they're just missing the trail but they're, they're cutting down, and that can definitely add to some of the confusion as well. Um, other people were doing it, so I don't think it was just us. I think it was really marked that way. So it's it's good to be on, on point with that navigation. So alongside all the other technical aspects of this course, right here, you got the soft sand. If you're carrying speed into a corner with that really soft sand and gravel, it's super easy to get caught up in that momentum of the vehicle and understeer it, and they just kind of rode up that wall then you come into some rocks here those are pretty sizable rocks but then they turn this corner and they got even bigger rocks like almost borderline boulders you know and usually rocks aren't that bad for off-roaders because we've got the big meaty tires but if you look at utvs they run a pretty narrow tire uh for an off-road vehicle they're pretty narrow tires so i think it's even scarier going over that especially if you're like going up one you slip off and smack a control arm or i don't know something like that it's just better to have meteor tires on rocks and that's not what utvs have and they're sending them over them so again real technical you got to know what your vehicle can take how to ride that path and how to go the path of least destruction i suppose man i'm so mad at myself for not recording the first take that first take was amazing you guys would have liked that first take <laughs> but hey you're here for the second take it's even better i think by the end of this video i would have talked for literally an hour straight like an hour this kind of energy this kind of just constant talking my voice is already scratchy an hour of just talking because i messed up and didn't have record buttons so right here we're gonna see them let it open up um, in a not flat section it's, a, it's actually a pretty nice open desert kind of whoop type section that they're gonna open up a little bit and I don't know if there's a trail on the left side uh, further out beyond what we can see but there's this guy that's gonna pass us right now and look how much speed he carries in passing us I don't know if he was just riding the flat ground alongside that technical trail and just I mean I guess it's not I don't think it's cheating but I don't know if he took the flat ground while we were over here just eating these woofs and stuff or if he was behind us and just timed it perfectly where he just carried all that speed and just slingshotted right around us at a perfect opening. But um, yeah, dude, that guy came in wicked fast. 
So that's the end of lap one right there. They're gonna stop us. We're gonna go into the pits. And we're not stopping at the pits. These these laps were almost the perfect size to get two laps in before we had to refuel. The tank lasts about two laps here. So we can coast right through. Probably used half a tank on lap one. We're gonna coast through the pits. You'll see us with the American flag right there on the right with that tall tower. You know, this one right here. That's us right there in the white truck. Woohoo, they're gonna pass us. And that's the end of lap one. Now something you're gonna get at the beginning of lap two that we didn't get at lap one is this infield section right here. In lap one, we're on the left side of these cones and they send us straight into the desert, right into the outfield. But here, they're gonna send us into the infield now, which I think is a pretty cool area uh, for battles. Right when you come out of the pits, if you're with somebody, this is the area to get some nice battling going, maybe take them in some turns and stuff before you get into the desert and it kind of gets into that that narrow trail and canyon type stuff where you can't make the passes. So it's a cool little area to battle. Couldn't really see it from the pits, but those people up on the hill on the right probably got a pretty good view of some, some, some battles there. So I think this guy's gonna pull away from us right now, but I don't know if we end up catching up to him or if we pass him or what, because the problem with this being such narrow trails is we don't have the wide trails to where the camera can pick up like a diagonal view of the side of the car to see their number or their sponsors. So I can't really identify any of these vehicles. Um, all I know is seeing straight behind them, so I don't know who's who in this race. It's kind of harder to give the shout outs or track who we've been passed by or who we pass, stuff like that. So. That's the unfortunate aspect of this. I, I really enjoy being able to identify the vehicles and kind of keep tabs that way. So I think right here is, um, maybe we passed it back there, or maybe right here is where that straightaway would have been coming out of the gate in lap one and sending us into the desert. chase this guy for, for for a minute and if you guys want to see like some exterior battles some exterior shots of us um go to the instagram page i don't know how this guy rolled over on straight away that's impressive but yeah if you want those exterior shots and those exterior battles go check out the instagram because we do have footage from like camera companies that guy's broken down from camera companies who got us battling with other people and stuff um that i only post on the instagram because it's just not long enough footage to post on here so go follow LASD underscore Polaris on Instagram to see that exclusive footage and exclusive content that doesn't get posted on the YouTube channel. So right here, this is the part of the race where uh, the racers reported that they were getting roosted by this guy. Obviously, it's not intentional. This guy's just ripping through, and it's just that soft, like, small little gravel rocks that the tread is probably just flinging like crazy. You'll physically see it come hit the camera, which is, I think, how the lens ended up getting spiderweb like this. Getting hit by rocks definitely is not fun. I've been pelted by like a quarter size rock right in my chest when I was riding a dirt bike. Um, not a good time. Luckily they have race suits and helmets on so I don't think this really affected them more than just smacking their visors and scratching them up. But they're getting roosted pretty bad. So I think maybe the GoPro caught, caught a rock or something and just kind of started the corner or something and then it'll crack later in the video. Right here, see we try to make a pass. We try going for that left lane right there but we see there's a car broken down. So we have to cut back into the right lane, get back behind this guy that we've been riding his ass for a while. And I definitely think if we were able to take that outside lane, we could have cut him off right here, got in front of him. But now, unfortunately, we're going to have to trail him going up this mountain and on the spine of the mountain and everything. But it would have been nice to be able to get in front of him. Unfortunately, the lane was blocked. So right here, you're going to see, watch like the middle of the screen, right there. Middle of the screen, you see crack just kind of shoots down. I'm not sure if it was the heat or the vibrations or a combination of the two, but it does that and it's going to widen. It's going to crack even bigger. Got another broken down vehicle on the side with a six sand rail next to it. That sand rail was out of the pits. Right here is where it's going to get wider. I think. Yep, there it is. It gets wider. <laughs> Cracks even more, but... Um, so, lap two, battery dies. They're right here in the pits at the end of lap two. I'm able to change both batteries, and you're gonna see a vehicle come in right here on the left. 
right before my fat hand gets in the way. The racers wanted to leave the pits before that car did, but unfortunately due to some fueling problems, the nozzle that we were trying to use or the, the, the hose to get the fuel in uh, just wasn't working with us. If you want to learn more about that situation, go watch the last video uh, from the pits. It explains it all, but yeah, they leave right before us and then we could take off once they leave the pit area. Um, but hey, the chase is on now, baby. We're heading into this infield and we're going to get behind them. Well, technically not in the infield. They took the infield and then right outside the infield, maybe two minutes after we left the pits, we catch up to him. And we're on this guy, like white on rice, baby. We're on him. It's really hard to see, especially with the sun setting and the dust and the crack, but we're on this guy. We're, we're blasting him with the sirens. We're trying to get around, but again, not many opportunities unless he's pulling over, which he's not, at least not now. But, um... So we're coming up right here. I think he's pulling over right here, or I thought he was pulling over, and then he just cuts back in front of us. Why are you going to take that outside little lane and give us an opportunity just to cut us back off? But it doesn't matter. He pulls over right here, and we finally get by him. That's cool. Um, yeah, again, I'm not sure why he took that outside line for a whole two seconds just to not let us pass. But it doesn't matter. He let us pass. Almost seems to so that's the end of lap two. After we passed that guy, we literally didn't see a single person for the rest of lap three. Sorry, that's the end of lap three. After passing that guy, we didn't see a single person for the rest of lap three. Just a really, really clean run. Um, no interference. We just did us, lay down a clean lap, and we carry on with our race. Same with lap four. That was us going into the beginning, and this is us at the end of lap four. Didn't see anybody on lap four either. We just laid down another clean lap, but... Let me talk about the lighting situation right now. So when we race daytime races, we take off our KC highlight bar up top because if we roll, that's a lot of uh, money to spend on a damaged light bar that we didn't even need on that race. So we take it off. But uh, if you watched the last video, you know that the race time got pushed back a little bit. So now we're running into some sunset type problems. Luckily, we have like a little 20 inch uh, light bar on the front bumper in front of the grill that we were able to utilize here. But it's still not ideal. If you've done any off-roading in the desert with all different hours of the day, you'll know that optimal time is midday when that sun is directly down and there's no shadows. You can read the terrain perfectly and you'll know if um, you off-road in the evening when the sun's setting, it starts throwing shadows and you can't really read the terrain that well and it's kind of hard. Like You can't tell depths and heights and, of terrain. So with the sun setting behind the mountains and us having a light bar kind of showing straight out instead of like light coming down like a light bar would provide it's really hard to read the terrain i don't know if that really affected them at all but i know it might have affected me if i was doing it but luckily we had that light bar and luckily we we did the lap times that we did because this could have carried us into pitch blackness with just that little 20 inch light bar that was showing straight ahead that would have been even more difficult so GoPro dies right there, footage ends right there. We end up finishing the race, getting eighth place, securing it, and fantastic clean race for our team. The only hiccup I think we really had was that gas nozzle problem, but the pit time was still super short. I think it was five or six minutes. I wrote down exactly how long it was, but it really was not that long. It could have been even shorter if it wasn't for the gas nozzle, but again, that was our only hiccup. A really clean race, and a clean race is bittersweet. Sweet because we had a perfect race. Um, well, not perfect. We had a pretty great race. Uh, we didn't have a breakdown. We didn't DNF. We finished, and especially in a great position, eight out of 36 people, fantastic. The bitter part is I don't have a whole lot to report to you guys in this video. Um, but that's a good problem to have. I'd rather lay down a clean race and not have a lot of problems to tell you guys and show you some great footage. New tires did great. New wheels did great. The weights and the sprayer definitely helped the clutch temperatures. Um, actually, the driver didn't even know that we were using that. He knew that it was installed, but he didn't know that they had used it until after the race when the co-pilot had told him, yeah, dude, I was hitting that any time I saw the temperature get above, I don't know, maybe like 200, 214, he'd spray it, and it kept it down below whatever that threshold he determined too much was. So it really, really came in, no pun intended, it came in clutch. <laughs> Having, having that sprayer, having the weights, having all these extra modifications. 
I know in previous videos I said we were going to get these shocks revalved before this race. Didn't end up happening. And I know I said we're going to get the shocks revalved after this race before the mint. Not going to happen. And here's why. The racer said that the tune that Fox did and that we did before Fox got a hold of them definitely helped uh, a whole bunch. It definitely changed the way that the shocks performed and it... Um, it performed great enough to where we don't have to revalve and we can just take the suspension setup we have now into the mint and be perfectly fine. So guys, that's all I have to report for this race. Please subscribe and stay tuned because we have the mint in less than a month. Less than a month. The mint 400 is coming up guys. And that is a fantastic, fantastic race and so many events. If you can make it out to it, I'd recommend it. If you can't, I'm going to be uh, vlogging every single day of it so subscribe make sure you're here make sure you see these videos because they are fantastic guys don't forget to subscribe I'm trying to hit 500 by the end of the year and i know we can do it so guys with that being said i will catch you guys in the next video